What's up guys, Joe from My Tech Jam here, and in this video I'm going to show you the easiest way to install and set up RetroArch on your Amazon Fire TV or Fire TV Stick and start playing your favorite games. Before we get started guys, remember if you like this video, hit the like button or let me know down in the comments below, and remember to subscribe to my channel for more Amazon Fire TV tips and tutorials. For those of you who don't know, RetroArch is basically an all-in-one emulator that will let you play many different retro game consoles within one application. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and provide you with games for NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Sega Genesis, and Atari 2600. I will also show you how to add more consoles and games going forward. So the first thing we need to do is scroll over to Settings on our Fire TV, then over to Device. Then under Developer Options, turn on ADB Debugging, and turn on Apps from Unknown Sources. You'll get this pop-up, just click Turn On. Once you're done with that, you'll need to get and make note of your Fire TV's IP address. You can get this by going back one menu into the Device menu, clicking About, and scrolling down to Network. Once you're done with that, you can switch over to your computer. Once you get on your computer, open up a web browser and go to mytechjam.com slash index.php slash retroarch. Once you get on the page, you'll see there's two links. One is the easy installer package that we will use in this video, and the other one is a list of ADB commands that accomplish what the installer package does. This is for Mac users. If you're running Windows, you can ignore this file. I've included a link to a guide that will show you how to install ADB on your Mac if you don't have it installed, and then I've also listed all the commands you would need to run. But again, if you're running Windows, you can ignore this. So next, click on the link to download the installer package. Once it finishes downloading, open the folder where you saved it and extract the files. Once the files are extracted, if you open up the package, you'll see in the emulator folder I included the RetroArch APK file, and then if you look in the individual ROMs folders, you'll see I included games for each one of the consoles. You'll also notice that there's a ROMs other folder. This is in case you want to load up ROMs for a console that I didn't include in the package. The current version of RetroArch at the time I'm making this video is 1.5.0, so that's what's included in the package, but I added instructions so you can check for an update and install a different version if you'd like. To install RetroArch onto your Amazon Fire TV Stick, just click the Install RetroArch Batch File. If you have Windows Smart Screen enabled, you'll get this pop-up. Just click More Info and Run Anyway. The pop-up may also look like this. If it does, just click Run. When the command prompt window opens up, just type in the IP address of your Fire TV and RetroArch will be installed. Keep in mind this install could take a minute or two, so be patient with it. Once the window disappears, the install is complete, and as you can see, RetroArch is ready to launch on our Fire TV. One side note, I've set up an alternate install method for Mac users and those who are having trouble with the batch file. All you need to do is go to search on your Fire TV, type in Downloader. Once you have that typed in, scroll down and hover over the word Downloader and click on it. Then click on the Downloader app. And then choose Download. It may also say Get if you've never installed the app before. Once it finishes installing, click Open. You can click OK on the pop-up, and then type in the URL mytechjam.com slash retroarc.apk. Once you have that typed in, click Download. Then choose Install, and RetroArc will be installed onto your Fire TV. When it finishes, you can just click Done and go back to your Fire TV main menu. So the next thing we're going to do is transfer our ROM files over to our Fire TV. So make sure you have all your ROM files in the correct folders and then run the install ROMs batch file. You'll get this pop-up again, just click more info and run anyway. When the command prompt window opens up, just type in the IP address of your Fire TV again and the ROMs folders from your computer will be transferred over to your Fire TV. Keep in mind going forward to add more ROMs to your Fire TV, you can just put them in the folders and run the batch file again. 
When the window disappears, our ROMs are transferred over and we can switch back to our Fire TV stick. So to open up RetroArch for the first time, from your Fire TV home menu, scroll down to your apps and games. Then go all the way over to the right and click See All. Then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you should see RetroArch. Just click on it to open it up. Keep in mind that after opening RetroArch from your apps and games one time, it will appear in your Recents menu going forward. The first time you open up RetroArch, it will need to extract assets, so just let that finish. Once that finishes, the first thing you need to make note of is how to navigate the RetroArch menu. For the standard Fire TV Stick remote, your arrow keys are going to work normally left and right, up and down. Your back button is actually your select button. The big circular middle button that usually selects is your back button. And the play pause button will exit you from a game and go back to the RetroArch menu. If you're using the Fire TV game controller, the left stick and D-pad work normal. They'll move you left and right and up and down. Your A button is select and your B button is back. Now that we know how to navigate the menu, move over to the right to settings and then scroll down and click on input. Then scroll down and click on input user1 binds. This is where you will map your controls. If you click user1 bind all, it will cycle through all the controls and let you map the whole controller at once. You may have to do it more than once after you see what the options are. I will quickly run through it so you can see what it looks like. Keep in mind that you can map all the controls individually if you scroll down the list, and the auto configuration for the Amazon Fire TV game controller is pretty good. The only thing I like to change is the D-pad, I just switch it to the left stick. When you're done mapping your controls, hit whatever your back button is once, and then click on Input Hotkey Binds. In here we want to set a button so we can exit out of a game and go back to the RetroArch main menu. So if you scroll all the way down you'll find an option called Menu Toggle. That's the one we want to set. You can set it to whatever you want. So when you make it down to Menu Toggle just click on it and map a button to it. If you're curious I'm going to use a click of the left stick. Next click your back button twice to go back to Settings and then you want to choose On Screen Display. Then on screen overlay and uncheck display overlay. This will get rid of the on screen controls. Once you do that, exit back to the main menu by clicking your back button twice and then going to the left twice. Now it's time to load our cores, which are basically the consoles we're going to play. So click load core, then scroll down one and click download core, then scroll down the list and click on each one of the cores that I have displayed on the list to the right to install them. Keep in mind that going forward, if you wanted to play around with different consoles, this is where you would download the cores. Once you're done with that, exit back out to the main menu, then scroll down and click on Configurations. Then click Save Current Configuration, and now you're actually ready to start playing some games. So exit back out to the main menu, and then to play a game, click Load Core, then choose the core you would like to use. I'm going to use the Atari core for this demonstration. Then choose Load Content and click on the directory that says Storage Emulated Zero. That's where our ROM folders are. Once you're in here, scroll down and find the corresponding ROMs folder for the console you're using, and then click on it and choose the game you'd like to play. If it asks you for the core again, just click the correct one and the game should start up. The process to play the other consoles is the same. You click Load Core, choose the core, and then you click Load Content and browse to the content and choose the game you'd like to play. I will quickly open up one game from each console so you guys can just see that they work. As always, if you guys like this video, hit the like button or let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And remember to subscribe to my channel for more content.